Um, when I was five, I was told we were going to move to Germany for a year, and I didn't want to go there. I argued not to go there, but we went. So, um, okay, I'll just read mine. It's not as theatrical as my sister, that's why I many say. Uh, as a young girl in Germany, I was terrified and neurotic, so much that I refused to eat whenever we would travel. We took a trip to Stuttgart to visit our uncle, our aunt and cousin, Penny. And uh, Uncle Jim saw my seriousness, and he made a comment that he thought I was a 40-year-old midget. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt perceived and accepted and welcomed, because I was a 40-year-old midget. <laughs> so I always loved visiting them in Stuttgart, and uh, his lightheartedness was part of the reason why. And I also thought he was really hip. The family was cool, they were so hip. And I was like, oh, this is relaxing. So I stopped, I stopped having stomach aches when I was there. Um, so I, I also remember my mom and Aunt Nancy and Uncle Jimmy would get together and there would always be this peeling, hysterical laughter. Um, some of us that we kids often joke that they were the Adams family, not the Addis. <laughs> uh, and Uncle Jimmy was often the instigator of the jokes and the fun. My mom would tell me stories about her and Aunt Nancy dressing him up as a little girl, putting makeup on him, and I wondered if perhaps all he could do was laugh. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> years later, in my 30s, I took another trip and visited the Addison Reston, and Uncle Jimmy took us out for sushi, and his favorite meal. And on that trip, I ate a hearty meal, and as always, we had lots of laughs. I just want to say, Uncle Jim, thank you for helping me find an appetite for life and for bringing fun, joy, and your own special sense of humor to our lives. You will be with us always. And my mom asked me to read for my brother, who is not able to make it. My brother, dear brother, I call him Todios, it's a long story. But it's probably appropriate that I read for him because he and I have a special bond. So I will try to speak in the voice of him. Which means I have to get quiet and intellectual. Okay. I first, this is my brother. I first met Uncle Jimmy when I was nine years old, and we were living in Munich from 1969 through 1970, the same time as he and his family were living in Stuttgart. On several occasions, we drove to Uncle Jim's house to visit. The visits were always fun and something the whole family enjoyed. On the Autobahn on the way to Stuttgart, our VW bus filled with four children and luggage could barely keep up with the slow lane. We were constantly passed by BMWs, Mercedes, Audis, and the occasional Ferrari or Lamborghini. Not just passed, but nearly blown off the road as it felt like we were standing still as the cars went by. We often lamented that we were the slowest vehicle on the Autobahn. Uncle Jimmy had an early 1960s BMW. He offered to take us for a ride, bragging that his car could easily reach 120 miles an hour. Since our VW could break, barely break 60, my father and I eagerly accepted. We hit the Autobahn and began accelerating. Everything was smooth until we hit 100 miles an hour, at which point the BMW began to shake and rattle. By the time we hit 120, I was holding onto the seat as the car felt like it was about to fly apart. My father turned to Uncle Jimmy and said, is this okay? Does it always rattle like this? <laughs> Uncle Jimmy calmly turned to my father and replied, What do you mean? It's driving just fine. He then smiled and thankfully turned his eyes back on the road. I never knew whether he was intentionally scaring us. I suspect he was. <laughs> Around the same time, Uncle Jimmy was sitting in the front passenger seat of our VW bus as we drove somewhere together in Stuttgart. The passenger side view mirror was loose at the time and tended to occasionally jar loose and swing down. For some reason, my mother was telling Uncle Jimmy about the tricky mirror. Uncle Jimmy pointed to the side view mirror and said, this one? And at that exact moment, the mirror swung loose as if on command and flopped down. Uncle Jimmy laughed. I knew it was just a coincidence, but at age nine, I wanted to think that somehow he made it happen. <laughs> as I got older and got to know Uncle Jimmy better, I, be I became convinced that it was his very presence that created such magical moments. Ooh, it's not a page. During the 2000, 2000 family, year 2000 family reunion in Colorado, I was sitting next to Uncle Jimmy at the bar in a restaurant in Estes Park. Couple, oh no. A couple of women were sitting, 
at the end of the bar. During a break at the conversation, Uncle Jimmy nudged me with his elbow and whispered in a low tone, Hey, do you think those two are Democrats? I didn't understand what he was getting at. He repeated, No, Democrats. <laughs> then he laughed his impish lash, laugh. I recently told this story to a lesbian social worker who I work with. Even though she isn't a Democrat in her political views, she laughed loudly and said it was one of the funniest ways she heard to refer to lesbians. <laughs> Jimmy had a knack for poking fun at people in a way that made everyone laugh, including the target of his jokes. But my earliest and deepest memories of Uncle Jimmy come from my mom always talking about him when I was growing up. At age three, I remember my mother speaking of Uncle Jimmy often with obvious love and admiration for her brothers. The pain and struggle of the family through Grandma's cancer and death and Grandpa's absence after her death was still fresh in the stories as told by my mother 20 years later. In particular, my mother struggled with being responsible for placing Uncle Jimmy in the Hershey School when he was a pre-teenager. I heard the stories about <coughs> Uncle Jimmy and the Hershey School every time we made chocolate chip cookies or brownie from scratch. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> the label on Hershey chocolate came to represent memories of a place that I'd never been to and an uncle that I had not yet met. The grief involved in the story about my mother having no choice but to drive <coughs> Uncle Jimmy into the Hershey School has stayed with me to this day. In the absence of their mother, Mom lied about her age and claimed she was 18 in order to sign Jimmy into school and provide a place for him to live. Although Mom always felt terrible about having to place Uncle Jimmy in what was at the time basically an orphanage, Uncle, Uncle Jimmy had always told her that he credited the school and life with providing a good education and becoming the basis of his success in life. Even at a young age, I was impressed with the grace with which Jimmy had accepted the situation and the optimism and good humor with which he turned what must have been a sad and traumatic situation into something positive. As I got to know Uncle Jimmy in person later in life, his relaxed grace and cheerfulness always impressed me. His early life experiences could have been justification for a life of bitterness, sadness, and resentment. But somehow Uncle Jimmy seemed to have transcended loss and abandonment. I found this beat to be an inspiration that helped me get through difficult times in my life. I always know that no matter what, I always knew that no matter what, if I persevered and kept a positive <coughs> attitude, I too could become successful and happy. For this, I am eternally grateful. It is this time, it is this grace, his good humor, and lightheartedness that I will always remember and admire.